Well, um, good morning. Um, is it a good morning? I've had it. So I'm still here with, uh, let me just introduce them again so that you know who I have. <laughs> Senator Richard Onyonka from Kisi County. I have Moshmua Kanyuidia Mutunga, Tugania West, but also the chairperson of the Agriculture Committee. Nabina Buera from Lugari and Titus Lote from Kachaliba. They can't agree on many issues. I'm just hoping that as we discuss the National Dialogue Committee report, we'll have a good dialogue um, to understand each other. So the report is out and it's, uh, yes, they have committee recommendations, but also the Azmir side was proposing to scrap the housing levy to also cut VAT on fuel to 8% as it was before the Finance Act of 2023. That was not agreed upon, so the consensus is that they strive to cut expenditure in the administration or in the government, including uh, the travel expenses <coughs> expenditure to be cut by half. The other proposals are on the questions of IBC and so much more that will be breaking down. Um, tell me, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Um, tell me, what, what do you think in terms of uh, that report, your earliest um, assessment on how it gives us solutions on how to move on? Mm, th thank you, Sami. But uh, as, as um, I delve into that, I'll start from your last mention <coughs> where they didn't, they, they didn't agree, uh, which is uh, the cost of living. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, uh, what I see there, the eight shilling, the five shillings and three shillings on fuel, uh, and what I see there, the 50% and 30%, zero impact. From where I see, sit, mm -hmm. zero impact <clears throat> in reigniting an economy which is on uh, a downward trend. Uh, um, eight shillings, that's a total from fuel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still above what would help. Economists have calculated very well and said to get this economy out of uh, its woods, fuel should not cost more than 177 shillings. Now, if you remove eight shillings, you have not even done a 10%, not even 5%, not even 3%. Mm. So for sure, that is just populist uh, from the committee, from where I sit. Now, look at the argument uh, on the 30% uh, reduction uh, uh, of allowances and uh, 50%. Of course, <clears throat> it fits in very well on the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto, because Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto is raid an employee. A person who is salaried, tax him to the core, even t go for his uh, uh, allowances to the core. But you know, they fail to understand one thing. Mm. For you to spur development, the middle class must have money to save. It is savings that spur development. It is savings that people reinvest at individual level to set an economy. So on that score, I can tell you uh, for the bipartisan team by Chungwa and Kalonzo, zero. I give them totally zero on cost of living. There are other issues there uh, which uh, they have attempted to deal with. The issue of IBC, I think uh, there is an attempt uh, to deal with the problem. Mm. Uh, the issue about the, the management of political parties. For sure, we've been making a mistake to put the management of political parties in an individual, you know? Uh, and the management of the political parties fund in an individual. I think I welcome the issue of, of the commission. commission. But what has my support on the whole is the win in devolution. Completion of the transfer of uh, functions to county governments, the increase of uh, the minimum shareable revenue from 15 to 20% uh, of collectible re uh, re total collected revenue. Mm -hmm. I find that as a win for the country. 
a win for devolution is a win for, for, for the country. But if you have to be realistic, Moshmoa Nabuera, is it a possibility? Because even with the 15%, we have a challenge in disbursing resources. So even if you have to review the law and say it's 20 or even more. Okay, let, let me now tell you the problem in this thing. The, the question is, why do you retain money at the center when the function is at the best? Because you retain this money at the center. All we are saying, release this money from the center to where activity is. By the way, you don't need to buy fertilizer at national government when agricultural function is in more. the county government. Just release the money to county governments, pass a policy that supports the farmers in this manner. Mm. That's all what it is. We are, we are not going to go for an extra cent from anywhere. It is from the same budget. All we are saying, you are holding money for wrongfully at the center. But this is cleared by parliament. What are we saying? That's why we want to change the law. And that's why we are saying, by the way, the, the, the people who scripted this law had one cardinal principle or one cardinal assumption that there would be goodwill by the leaders. To implement. Yeah. Now, how do you legislate goodwill? goodwill. T you know, tell me, you know, Omami, how, how do you legislate goodwill? You know, Moshimoda, but you sit at the National Assembly. Or, or how do you legislate bad manners? <laughs> you sit at the National Assembly, and this is the house that really decides. By the way, the, the, issues of, the issues of transfer of function and release of funds is not a legislative issue. It's a constitution. It's already, the constitution has already defined. And you have an oversight role. Why is parliament not able to effect this? That we have now to go, because it may require a constitutional Simon, referendum. When, when parliament has bad manners, what do you do with it? <laughs> Tell me. You know, I'm asking you this question. What, what do you do with it? We have sung on the, on, on the, on the floor of the house. Yeah, I wish sometime, Sami, just get out of here. Come when we have an issue of debate in that house, like the one we had for the Finance Act. Then you will know some of us. You'll see our true colors. It's not what you see. You, you will even reason very well. Yeah. I, I'll give you, I will give you um, the most reasoned. Mm. All of us, all of us seated here know very well that uh, we have a big challenge with the JSS. Big, huge. When we were debating money and we were trying to raise and say, can we tweak some money to improve JSS, to, uh, to add capitation to school? We, we, we couldn't agree. The issue is, the committee level. is even at the, on the, on the floor of the house, uh -huh. is that we must fit in the straight jacket that has come from this executive. What do you do? And therefore, even if you are to amend the constitution, what changes? Moshima Mutunga, tell me, with all these challenges that witness, do you think the QI is in reviewing the supreme law uh, to fix some of those things, whether it's about increasing uh, the allocation to 20%, um, or that is the question of even creating new positions of prime minister and uh, the little of official opposition. Does that help service delivery, but also what he calls manners of, the, of, of those in government? Um, what we know is that um, once the constitution stated that counties should be given 15%, it has mm -hmm. never been less than 15%. So reviewing it, 20% will definitely increase the amount of money dispersed to counties, which is positive. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, how does it contrib this contribute to the cost of living? I mean, how does it reduce the cost of living? It therefore me, depends on the interpretation of the actions that will be taken on the, uh, at the county level. There has to be commensurate actions that lead to reduction in cost of living. So there must be definition of what is supposed to be done in order to reduce cost of living. Because transfer of money from the national government to the county and also releasing the other de devolved function, defining the, or rather unbundling the functions that probably were unbundled and not released to the county government, does not necessarily lead to cost of living reduction. What is important is we need to focus on what will this money do so that we ease the cost of living of the people. First of all, we need to, for instance, reduce the cost of production of food which is important, once the cost of production of food is reduced, then probably the cost of food will be cheaper, I mean, it will be lower, and therefore the cost of living. On the other hand, we need to also make systems work better. 
if we increase efficiency uh, of, of, of the operations at the county level. And therefore, that also leads to reduction in the cost of living. Maybe do better roads, maybe, you know, build better markets, maybe, you know, there are things that maybe have better working extension systems and services. That will lead to increased production and therefore reduction in the cost of living. On the other hand, uh, when we, we, we talk about uh, uh, the, 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 the issue of, 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 of road maintenance levy, Mm. Uh, I, I think some any reduction is significant, and we are talking about five shillings to the fuel levy in the and three shillings to the adulterated levy. This this is this is significant. We are talking about spreading across is a lot of money. On the other hand, the travel travel cost and reduction of the travel cost by fifty percent. <laughs> you realize that if you look at the entire budget layout for different different MDAs, you realize that. Some have a lot higher recurrent expenditure than development expenditure. So what we are trying to say is that contain your recurrent expenditure to the most essential travels. Do not have luxurious travel. Well, I know it is a trade-off between what benefits you can get from traveling and basically what you should also, you know, we are likely to be the forfeiture mm. of travel because some of them are key. So rationalize what is most key, reduce by half. That means saving exactly, that amount of money. How exactly do you do that rationalization? Because it's, it's good to have an aspiration, but how do you attain it? Uh, you know, travel is structured. Travel is planned for, travel is structured. Every year they are laying out functions that probably need participation of countries, where we have state, state, state actor consultations. You can decide which one to send, what size of delegation. If you are sending 10 people delegation, you send five. If, for instance, something is not extremely essential, then you can have the end of missions in those countries attending and therefore uh, relaying the information or getting let, information. Let, from let's the be country. a bit particular. So, yeah. Parliament in the financial year ended June 2023 spent some 9.6 billion shillings on travel, both domestic and international. Yeah. You sit in Parliament. So, what would you say has to be cut? Because to cut it by half means you spend 4.8 4 billion shillings. Precisely. And, uh, and in the last uh, supplementary estimate, mm. the, the travel for Parliament. Parliamentary travel was reduced by quite some, more than 3 billion. So 3.2, I think. Now, the idea is this. What would happen, and what I imagine is likely to happen here, is we shall look at how can we rationalize the kind of you know, delegations that we have. If maybe members of our committee were traveling twice a year, then we would probably say every member travels once a year. And this once a year, the committee has to clearly indicate which function is extremely important for this country, which cannot be undertaken by people who are representing us across. And of course, one of the things that parliamentary, parliamentarians do is benchmarking. The trouble is for benchmarking, for learning, for cross-checking what the others are doing so that you may do your oversight better, so that you may legislate better, so that you may probably even represent people better. So the idea is- That's interesting because I've heard it so many times. Uh, sorry, I'll get to you, Senator. Even MCAs, when they come in, they want to go to Arusha for benchmarking. What does that entail? What is that? Like, uh, have you attended one benchmarking session? Yes, I have attended bench benchmarking sessions. I was in South Africa in um, about two months ago. So what are you and doing it there? was, I mean, the exposure was extremely uh, enlightening. In the first place, we, we studied the regional government, which is the, South, the, the Western Cape, Cape, Cape government. And we learned so many things. First of all, we learned that they started by preserving their natural resources. Preserving their water. No water goes to the ocean unless probably the area is properly, properly water. Blocking the water. Have a thing, there's the stream and the river water for up, upstream, for downstream irrigation. They have done a lot of that. They have, they have demarcated their areas in terms of this is a grazing zone, this is where we are going to keep sheep, this is where we are going to keep cattle, and so on. They have also this, uh, uh, planned their, their land use very, very well. They have planned their infrastructure extremely well. They have identified the touristic resources and promote them, you know, develop these resources and promote them, these resources, it's giving them revenue. So there are many lessons that you can learn from such a travel. When you come to Kenya, these are the things that, that now you bring to the committee to discuss and see how you can factor them in. So, for I know my friend here is amused because he doesn't think that uh, some of the Sam, things, uh, Sam. For, for instance, <laughs> you know why Dr. Mutunga is laughing? Yeah. He knows he's not saying the truth. 
No, I'm saying those, those right. travels are just visits no, to go and have fun. Let me hear from him. You know, because he has a <laughs> I have a report which does not have any incident where we have. If he, tra if Mutunga, he traveled alone, I'm comfortable and he should actually have gone with maybe a PA. So, Dr. Mutunga, you've Let's spoken about... Let's find out how many uh, people traveled with him. <laughs> you've spoken about water harvest well, um, before it reaches the ocean. Yes. So it was two months ago. What have you done with that knowledge? That knowledge is already in a report that is going to be adopted by the House, and thereafter we shall follow implementation. The idea is that we need, in this country, and we have spoken, spoken very strongly about water harvesting, harnessing surface water. Right now, Kenya is washed. It's a wash. We have more than 20 times the amount of water we'll ever need to irrigate the entire Kenya. If we had structures to contain this water in the country, we would change the entire environment. So and we would also make land use that be a lot better. The idea is uh, trying to see how, mapping out the area. Of course, there's something happening. There is already set aside money for, or rather budget for mega dams, about 100 of them. We have about 500 dams, you know, other dams that are coming up. We have water pans that are being constructed. This is happening, so, so but say, it's happening you're at You're saying that is already happening, yes. and the ministry is doing that. Yeah. So why does why the parliament travel? need to go and find out what is happening to come and write a report to be implemented, if the ministry already knows what it's doing? It is to first to, to fast track this, these activities, How? to try and show you the importance. Its role. The, it, it, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that it is, it is important for you to talk from facts. We saw it happening here. It is helping downstream irrigation. We have seen a lot you of benefit from this irrigation. Well. There is a lot that is, not, that is not happening in this country you that you need that. to emphasize on. Can't you? Stand there from? Yes, you can read in books. They, are, they, are there. they have always read in books. But you need first-hand experience. You need to see. quote existing cases that you can see. We can take Kenyans to see this if they haven't been able to see it. Senator. Talk to me about um, that question of um, the, the ever-moving question of cost of living and, of course, the report, what it entails. But in totality, how does this help Kenya move? Sam, we have sat here many, many times discussing these things. And maybe this is why people like me are now, uh, I'm suffering burnout. This country's solutions to the problems, they are they're in the books already. Some, where we need to do our dams, where, how we are going to do them, and why we need to do them. That has already been put out there. We have talked about it for the last, I've been in parliament for all these years, and these issues are being, have been being discussed. The cost of living, what I agree with uh, Dr. Mutunga and the KK government is very simple, Sam. That once they legislated and decided that they, they are going to tax people, once they legislated and decided that they are going to do certain things after that law was passed, it would actually be unconstitutional unless we go back to the House to go and reverse that decision, which could be done by a supplementary. My suggestion is KK government wants people to be taxed heavily. KK government wants Kenyans to pay up to 300 shillings fuel. KK government doesn't want to send money to schools. When did, for, when did they say they want to charge 300 shillings per litre? There was a time they were suggesting there are 211. Chances are it, it could go to 300. Yeah. And me, I've sat here on this studio and said, please don't take it to 300. He wasn't suggesting. He was saying he read an article and prices may go up. OK, I pray that it doesn't go beyond the 211 yeah. because it will be completely crazy out here. Sam, we have a problem with our inputs. We have a problem with our fuel. We have a problem with our electricity. We have a problem with our structure, policy, and management. The problem with our country is basically managing the resources we have and making sure that we don't steal the way we are stealing. The reason why Kenya has a problem, it is we set up structures, we set up tender systems, we set up everything has been set up. And I'm not saying this about the national government, Sam. This is from the national government to the county governments. Tenders are sorted out for people just to, put, to, to, to bring in businesses where they are going to make money in billions. These days, Kenyans don't steal hundreds of millions. They steal 10 billion, 19 billion, 24 billion. That is the problem with our country, Sam, today. The cost of living is not an issue that we just laugh at. Right now, people are not able to pay school fees. Right now, you have got individuals who can't even drive their cars to school or to their jobs. Right now, NHIF has a problem, all right? 
There is no money getting to the hospitals to treat, to treat public servants, to treat private individuals who want to have NHIF. The problem with our country, Sam, is basic management. We are basically mismanagement our country, and then you know what we do? We just keep lying about it. Oh, the reason why we have to travel, like my brother said, by the way, him, you are agree, travel. That is something you should do, because you are the chair. But let me ask you, my brother, let's go the whole of this year. Why are people traveling to Brazil? What is it that Brazil can do with us? The coffee sector in Kenya is dead. You look at the pyrethrum, is dead, which we talked about. You are talking about uh, uh, tea. Our farmers are not even getting... Uh, they are revival efforts. They are, they, wait, but, but you see the point, my brother. I am not seeing an orderly chairman. I'm not seeing an orderly systematic planning on how these challenges we have, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Everything I see is this haphazard movement of activities and stories and meetings and uh, media stories. When they get tired, they start talking about Uhuru, depending on what Uhuru did last week. When they leave Uhuru, they come and start saying anybody else they would see around. You guys, can you govern? We are waiting for you to tell us we have achieved this. We are moving this way. No, you know, are, are our you university saying, students are you Sam, saying that we haven't been Sam, telling you what you have something. achieved? Are you saying that you don't know what you have already achieved? The only thing that so the far. president has achieved, by the way, which is the biggest one, and God has been on his side, even though he said there's no Elino, the rains are there, but fertilizer is coming, production, I live in uh, Rift Valley, production of maize has increased. Fantastic. We give him credit. But now wait, wait. Have you told us what NCCPP is doing? National citizen produce have no money to buy maize. You are telling farmers, go and deliver the maize at 4,000. I mean, they, 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 Sam, what I'm saying is this. Why can't the government just be orderly in the policy decisions they're implementing? Right. Since we have the money, we have overborrowed, we are overtaxing, we are already having money. What is that money doing right now? Okay. All right. Um, I'll get to Moshmo Lote, but there's something you appear to be burning. Y y yes. Uh, you know, I I've listened to Chair. Uh, responded to your question, and I've listened it to my senior mm -hmm. senator responding. Uh, Sam, I want to demonstrate to you why I said the attempt by uh, the uh, NADCO mm -hmm. on, on a, the issue of cost of living has zero impact. <clears throat> Yesterday morning, mm -hmm. I decided to buy token, electricity token, <clears throat> of 700 shillings, and it is here. I can share with you, it's not a secret. Eh? It bought 15.49 units. The only amount which bought units was out of 700, 189.68. 510 went to other charges, taxes. My brother, my brother. This is what we need to be talking about. No, 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 exactly. these stories. I mean, you cannot develop an economy, yeah, when the driver of that economy, which is electricity, is unmanageable. You cannot be telling us you want to construct houses. When we get into that houses, we'll stay in darkness because we can't afford electricity. That's what we are talking about here, that we need tangible. You know, um, why do we have enough rains? In fact, the, some of the dams have busted yeah. as of yesterday. Mm. And electricity is increasing <laughs> because 700 shillings two weeks ago, some two weeks ago, 700 shillings, I bought 21 units. Yesterday, I bought 15 units. There's something wrong. And this is what is wrong. Let me explain Please to you what is wrong. Give me the full bill. So yes. 100 shillings paid, uh-huh. 700 shillings paid, yeah. the units 15.49, mm -hmm. amount f which is called token amount, mm -hmm. 189.68, other charges which are taxes, mm -hmm. 510.32. It's crazy. That tells you. I, 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 how, I how do you change a country like this? I have a let, let, let me just complete my, 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 my statement. Yep. This explains to you, so, you, know, you know, I was here last week and I was explaining to you why Kenya Kwanzaa will have a problem. You increase taxes in every sector. You tax everybody, okay? 
businesses collapse. So you, 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 you constrain the, 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 the spread of, of taxes. Eldoret Airport, and I need anyone to challenge me on this. Eldoret Airport, in four months ago, in, in the May, June, mm. every week it was collecting 70 million from taxes from goods from Abu Dhabi. Last week, it had lit 28. What happened? Because of over taxation and changing the taxation and, regime and, 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 the duties. and the duties, the goods are now going to Endebe and Dar es Salaam. Now, how will you get your targets? That explains to you why even after increasing taxes in every sector and to everyone, KRA had a shortage of 98 billion. They are not hitting their target. They are not hitting their target. I thought the miss was 79 billion shillings. Mushmo Mutunga, you had a contrary yeah, yeah. bill. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, Sam. Yeah. We 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 need to check on what is happening at the point in time. Okay. I also want to give you same results. I mean, same. I mean, use the same example he has given mm -hmm. for several months. Let's go back to August. Can no, you give me the latest? Yes. Yeah, no, no. no we, let's go to, the, to, 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 to systematically, you know. Okay, go ahead. In, on August, uh, the 13th of August, I bought token for 5,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. Other charges took 17.95. So the rest was by units. How many units? The units were, five, uh, I bought 15, 155.73 units. On 21st of August, I used, no, let, let, let's, let's go to where there is 5,000. On 2nd of September, I bought the same amount of mm -hmm. tokens, used the same amount, and the status quo remained, no change. On the 17th of September, I bought the same amount of tokens, and the amount of money I spent on other charges was 1726. Remember, I spent initially 1795, mm -hmm. which means this was lower. Mm -hmm. And 30th of September, the same. How many tokens did you get? I, I got 159.08 then. Mm -hmm. And uh, on that thirtieth of September, I bought the the talk, talk, I used five thousand shillings to buy a token, and other changes went to seventeen twenty six, just like the previous one. Mm -hmm. And so there is consistency. <coughs> there must be something that probably would have. I, I, I got I bought one fifty nine point zero eight. Same. November. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm talking about September. September. I, want to I, don't, talking about I, I, I don't have the, for, the one for, the, for November right yeah. now. Now, let's go back to you, this. Maybe you need to show some the one you have. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I, that is OK. You, you, you can even we, we, we need, you, we need, we can we need to, we need to the, ask ourselves. Just a moment, Honorable Mutunga. I want to yes. hear from Honorable Lotte here, because he's, he's been quiet. And yeah. so the concerns, of course, of living. But what he's trying to say is yeah. that it, yeah, just whatever you get from the tokens is less. And for the amount of money, you get less for, for, for talk, from talk for tokens, and other charges are more. Mm. Yeah. That's what it According is. According to his presentation. Yeah, yeah, yes. That's what Which it I is. don't think is. So, Moshmo Alote, how shall we resolve That's this? Because we can go, in, go this way back up to the next last year. Just pay today. Don't, 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 don't go back. Just, just pay now. Let me pay now. Yeah. <laughs> you don't I cannot pay right now. Uh, well, thank you. Um, first of all, let me appreciate the fact that uh, uh, facts are put before everybody. And we can actually see. Uh, it seems that this country, from what I'm hearing, is taxing people differently from where the political side you're coming from. Because uh, looking at what uh, Nabi is saying and looking at what Dr. Mutunga is saying, mm -hmm. it's completely different. Uh, different. It's not different. Uh, because the period is different. It's, it's saying that it's taxed out of 700, 500 is other charges. And yet, Dr. Mutunga here, out of 5,000, only the other charges are 1,700. It basically means probably we are then operating from different regimes. But that is not it. I believe the regime is the same. The taxes are the same. It's only that we interpret it differently. What I would want to say in this particular debate, because we are talking about the national dialogue, mm. and I want to appreciate the principles. I want to appreciate uh, the president, His Excellency Dr. Ruto, because yesterday he agreed and said, uh, on Sunday, he said, the report is out, and I appreciate everything that is in there. And I have also looked at what uh, the former prime minister said. He actually said that he's not read the report, but he's called for a PG so that they can look at the report. This, for me, is a very good thing because, one, we have to move from 
blaming each other and starting to throw blames here. I think the report has been sat in by people from both sides of the house. And so we cannot come here and start blaming uh, the people who have actually sat in this committee because we entrusted these people as Kenyans to sit and, 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 and dissect everything that is affecting this country. And Kenyans were given opportunity. Every Kenyan was given opportunity to present. Do you have an opinion about it? Um, my opinion is, let us move on with this. Let us not throw stones onto it. Because anybody, before we actually came to the National Dialogue Committee, there was another committee, which then after some times was disbanded. Was disbanded. Why? Because we started <coughs> throwing stones onto it, and we never moved as a country. The fact that we've actually come with this national dialogue to the levels where we've now had a report that has been presented before the principles is a very good thing. And okay. I want to appreciate every country, every Kenyan that did this. Any Kenyan that is, whether you are legislator or not, any Kenyan that is throwing cold water well, Honorable, this, let, let's be specific, uh, because part of the report is about um, the reforms that are needed. Yes. Uh, in the Constitution, <coughs> excuse me, in the Constitution and other um, electoral laws. And there's a proposal that the Constitution be amended to provide that Parliament may extend the intervals within which the review of boundaries may be done by a resolution of at least two thirds. Currently, uh, the constituency boundaries and of course the wards should be reviewed between, w within eight to 12 years. Yes. Uh, 12 years. Yes. Mm. The 12 years expire on, in March yes. 2024. Next, next year. Yes. Mm. Next year. We don't have a commission, meaning if we get a commission and they review the boundaries beyond March 2024, that will be an unconstitutional thing. I don't know if you are in agreement with that. But if you open the constitution, that actually parliament can decide when to review the boundaries or not, is that a safe thing, knowing all the challenges we've been having members of parliament saying that parliament has been captured, it is not doing its role? Uh, well, let's agree, first of all, that uh, we are constitutionally time bad to be able to review our boundaries, because we are now going beyond the 12 years period. Correct. We are going, to, that is time bad. And it is a making of this country because we are the ones that have actually messed, <coughs> including with the IBC commissioners. As a country, not, not any, any side of, 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 uh, of, of the divide. So let us agree, first of all, that is it. And two, the reason why, and I believe there was a thinking behind it, the reason why they have actually now put it to parliament is because they have realized that by the time you are setting up the commission, because now there's an agreement of reconstituting of the, the people that will be electing the IBC commissioners from seven to nine. That is agreed. By the time all these things come into effect, we will have been beyond March of next year. And the reason why and then this recommendation of the National Commission, of the committee, has agreed that let Parliament take charge on this. I do not think this is written in stone that is going to subvert the Constitution. It is only to create time for us to be able to, to be within uh, the reasonable time. To, to, to open up this window so that we can be able to review our boundaries. Otherwise then, if we do not give that window like they have given, then we will be time bad and we will not be able to review our boundaries ever because the constitution has locked it up to March next year. So for me, it's a window that was open that was very critical for this country. Sam, I, I, I think this issue of tariffs, I think I followed it up a little bit. Mm. Uh, I, I, I would like uh, Nabuera to revisit his figures. Because I want to give you figures for no 12th of November and today. 12th of November, I bought, I bought, I used 5,000 shillings and the other charges went with 1851. Today, I have just bought the same yeah. amount of money yeah. and the other charges have gone with 1851. So where is he getting his figures from? Let's not cook figures to come and no. blame the government no. here. I think we're also messing no. up. No. <laughs> Revisit your no. figures. This no. is Kenya Power and Lighting no. Records. The, I don't know how you no, doctor you as let, 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 right. let me help let me help Mutunga. You are not that, that, that is the problem. Lies. That is the, the problem, that's the problem with the Kenya Kwanza. They place people no, no. who don't understand. This is just problem without without No, let, let no, me help. No, right now. The cost of living let, is high. Let, and let it's order for them. Let, but it doesn't have to be over, over amplified. Let, let me, we don't have to bring lies here. No, let me I'm giving you everything. But this these are it. the figures. Now, these please. figures are No, let me help you. We mean how are you going to help me? Listen, we have listened to you, you've given your different figures. Stop lying. Obviously, you can't lie on a national the national system. Let's not go there. Wrong. Mutunga. It is extremely Mutunga. wrong. With your what, November, what I respect you, don't you know. a lot. No, what, what but it is unfortunate you that you can I, come I'm, here and No, I'm shocked that you are a whole chairman of a committee and you don't know that the tariffs for people who benefit from REREC in a rural area is different. What do you mean? I'm, I'm in shock. 
What do you mean? That is what Kenya Kwanza is. They place people in responsibility who don't do research. I don't. Ah. What research have you done? <laughs> I think Bur I think I don't even understand you. The okay. problem is you're making if you know so little, you think you know so much. That's unfortunate. Bur it's bur very okay. unfortunate. No, no. Look, extremely unfortunate. I listen to your figures, both of you, in good faith. And I don't My figures can, can you take seven you know we can can you take seven hundred shillings hold and hold pay hold now? Hold it, hold it. Seven hundred are paid right hold now hold and I've got in the same thing. Okay, let's not make this difficult. Kenyans are watching and I've we got hold you with a lot of esteem, so which we should respect. To make sure that we make good use of their time, um, Senator Onyonka, you're quiet. I don't know what you're thinking, <laughs> uh, but um, talk to me about um, the situation we find ourselves in. The the, the constituency and ward boundaries turned eight in 2020, March 2020. We are just about to get to 2024. For a whole four years, we've done nothing. I remember the Chebukati team started the process of reviewing boundaries. They were never allocated resources. They were told that that can wait. Here we are in a situation that we cannot get our, ourselves out of. And now the recommendation is to amend the constitution to take care of our missus. Uh, Sam, let me first of all say one thing. The discussions and the meetings and the report that has come from BOMAS, I give William Ruto 100% support and credibility, let me tell you why. Because of the state capture that has been around him, it was, I think, one of the most difficult decisions he had to make. You remember the narrative, this is supposed to be a discussion so that we can have a handshake government with the Nusumukate where Raila wants that stuff. We kept on begging people and singing and saying in this studio here that that is not what we want. Finally, the president agreed, he became a gentleman, and he delivered on this. We have gone and discussed and agreed what needs to be done. My argument has always been very simple. As Kenyans, those things which we agree with, can't we agree? Yes. Those things that are so basic, fix the IBC. Make sure that we, if we are supposed, if it is difficult for us to set up more counties because it is financially not viable, can't we then look for an alternative, for example, of increasing constituency in these areas? Because the creation of these units has nothing to do with geographical location. It has more to do with distribution of resources hmm. and fairness and how those resources are utilized. We are saying those that we can disagree on, like changing the price of fuel, like like um, uh, asking for something to, I mean, this issue of uh, discussing that people are traveling some, I find this to be a silly discussion. Com Why should you discuss that? We know in parliament, people are just traveling, doing nothing. We know money is being wasted. We know government departments, people are taking impress which they shouldn't. We know that people are buying flowers in offices. Why are you buying flowers in offices when your people don't have medicines in hospitals? These, these, there are certain very basic things as a people we need to do. And my argument is, and I want to tell my brother, Dr. Mutunga, we are not demonizing the government. Those things which the government does, we give you credit. I personally give William Ruto credit where he is, must get it. That is but surely, some of you guys who are under him, the things people are doing, I mean, you look at it, you've been seeing the stories. Huh? People are just buying helicopters, people are buying houses, people... You know, Kenyans are seeing these things. And Mutunga, you know what our friends are doing. What, what resources are they using to buy? They are stealing public money. How so? I mean, Sami, you don't want me to come here. You know every time me, I never say anything here. You want me to bring documents? Yes. Me, I'll bring them. Bring them. I'll bring you. They, what we are saying, because we can't fix this economy so long as there is leakage. We can't fix this economy so long as people are doing tender projects, not because the policy requires, but because that is where they'll make the largest amount of money. We need to stop these things. You look at the, the problem we are having with exams. People are leaking exams. Uh, the, the National Examination Council officers are the ones who are selling the exams. Children are traumatized. I am shocked. My, my son's classmates. Sami, how do you have a class whereby children are earning a one grade, 75? What, what is it with our country? Why don't we want to do things properly? Why is it that we, we just want to, it's self-interest, it is, it is, you know, it is frustrating for people like me. I've been around here watching what is going on. I've been around, I mean, look at what is happening right now. We have got floods. 
All right? And there are people who should be around the president telling him, please set up groups, talk to the governors. Right now we should be having an emergency outfit running from state house. We should not be discussing any politics. It is raining, people are dying. And then you know what we do? We go to political rallies, we start talking about, oh, today it's you who we are abusing, my friends are abusing each other, who stole, I don't know which money from which oil. You know, you know Senator, we continue to hear this, and you have said several times that there are people that are buying, they're enriching themselves, and they're stealing, and they're getting into tenders. But I'm just wondering, is there any money, public money, that is spent without the clearance of parliament? The point I'm saying is this. Did I say parliamentarians are not involved? We are all in the team. <laughs> it's a whole cartel. It's, a, it's, a, it's state capture from the executive. You come to the National Assembly. You come to the Senate. You go to the county governors. You go to the MCS. Some, and this is what I want President Ruto to do. Somebody needs to stand up and say, you people, you cannot steal. You cannot mis mismanage resources of poor people. Because these poor people that we have mismanaging their resources, at some point, they are going to turn against the ruling class. At some point, whether we like it or not. You think we Kenyans out here are so happy when they see an MP who's driving around with seven vehicles following him. But because he's in government, he's now your majority, you what, your minority. One car is enough, one bodyguard is enough. Do you need 19 people? Kwani, whose people's money have you eaten that you need 16 people to secure you? What, 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 what is this vanity? What is this kleptomania see that we are involved in? Everybody wants to be a billionaire. People no longer want to be millionaires. Ah, Sam, Sam. we are betraying our people. I think, uh, I'll, I'll get to you, Moshimo Nabwera. Um, but Moshimo Lote, again, you said that it has been agreed upon that the constitution of the selection panel should have um, um, nine people, uh, yeah. not seven. That's a that recommendation. The parliamentary, yes, a recommendation. Mm. Parliamentary Service Commission should have two representing the other side of the divide. The political parties liaison committee should have three. One, not from the, from the parliamentary parties, but the two from the majority and minority side. Yes. ICRK, Interreligious Council of Kenya, two. ISPAC, Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya, one. <coughs> and the Law Society of Kenya, one. And yesterday I was asking the question because that gives the political class a dominance of five out of nine, which is more than 50%. Is that a good thing? But secondly, how far does it help us? Because it is just a selection panel, it is not the commission. Uh, well, we cannot say it's just a selection panel because that was one of the contentious issues. You know, in this country, IBC is a big, big, big uh, elephant in the room. And so to select the people that sit in the IBC is a very critical role. And the reason why one of the agenda Karin, in the National, <laughs> National Dialogue Committee Karin. was about IBC. And, then, and so for me, when the president on the 13th... Yes, Senator, your mic is hot. When the president on the 13th of February appointed the seven people constitutionally, he was supposed to do. There was an uproar because they said he's appointed people that will then be able to set IBC that is very favorable to the president. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that we've been able to increase yeah. the number basically tells you that both sides have agreed. And, and, and it's important that this is a discussion that was done. Mm -hmm. They have agreed. And irrespective of whether we've got 50% uh, politicians or political class, in any case, this country, on all countries actually, all governance, all democracies are run by uh, politics. The people who are elected to represent others. So if 50% uh, of the people that have been elected to represent the people and then the others have an interest group, me, I do not have a problem. As long as we've agreed as a national uh, dialogue committee that that is what the way to go, I will agree it is a very important, important, even if it's an addition of one person, and we all agree and say now we are comfortable, then that will now set an IBC that is agreeable by both. Because if we do not agree on IBC, all these other problems will continue following this country. Yeah. You see, the reason I ask that is because initially, the panel that brought on board the Terrera 4, Parliamentary Service Commission was to contribute four persons. Um, the Law Society of Kenya was one. I, Interreligious Council of Kenya was two. So that was four out of seven. Four out of seven, again, was over 50%. And the High Court found that this is dominance by the political class in the panel. Again, 
there is this proposal to bring on board representatives of political parties, which is five out of nine. Don't you fall the same challenge as those identified by the High Court? But uh, was, can I ask? Okay, something? before we go there, is is there a constitutional requirement that was interpreted by the High Court that there should not be more than fifty percent from the political class? I don't think it was. And I don't think it is. And the reason why, when the technical team sat down as the National Dialogue Committee, mm -hmm. they, if it was, then they would have looked at it. But I don't think it is. And the reason why they have agreed to us to take to nine. And so let us not demonize the, the constitution of the committee. Let us first of all agree. Have we as a nation agreed that nine is enough? Nine is a good number? If we say yes, I will say let us leave that matter okay. to rest. All right, I'll yes. get to you, Honorable Nambuera, but w what is it? Yeah, I'm, I'm saying that uh, we are putting together IBC to sort out the politicians. Why are you worried about their dominance? Because, because, because this is a business, really. It is to deal with the issues of polity. It's not anything else. These others are coming in to bring other, you is know, issue of the to take care of the other interest yeah. groups. Uh, but the issue, IBC, basically, IBC is supposed to, 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 to sort out the election, sure election elections. Elections are not about politicians. They're about Kenyans. Yeah, they're about Kenyans. But, but, but it's a political process. Even the, 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 the subdivision of, uh, I mean, electoral boundaries. It's a political process. It's representation. People complain because they don't have sufficient, you know, uh, they, they are either too many or the area is too large and they, they, they are not reached by development. So and you know, interpretation, you the global interpretation, interpretation of development is polity. Polity interprets development. You don't see so, a problem in having five Absolutely not. Parties. No problem. Okay. And as long as the two sides agree, because the problem was the, the impasse between the two. They were saying, okay, the process, the process we are using mm. does not, is not sufficiently inclusive. If adding two is sufficiently inclusive, then so be it. Yes. What is important is that so. the report is agreed upon. Everything that was laid out, was read out, is agreed upon by the two sides of the divide. So we should, uh, we should basically, and we attached them. And we also went and presented memoranda. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that they have resolved all these issues and agreed this is the way to go. And they are proposing to Kenyans okay. that can we take, can we go, can we go that direction? Sam. Let, let me hear from Moshimo Nabona <coughs> first. S Sam. <coughs> What led to NADCO? What led to NADCO was a, a disagreement, an impasse of some kind. So it meant people have to get on the table and negotiate. I'm, I'm even very worried that uh, from your standpoint, uh, the political class uh, dominating that uh, is a problem. But political parties, people belong to political parties. The representative of political parties are representing interests. This thing is about interest. And how do we get the interest on the table? It is from those political parties that we get interests of various groups on the table. So on this one, mm -hmm. Uh, the NATO has got it very right. And a, a negotiated system of agreeing on how to put together IBC will create two things, trust and faith in the process, which is important. Doubt. I hear you. You, you know, sometimes uh, I, I get worried, uh, mm -hmm. colleagues. Do you know that professionals like you are members of political parties? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you. Uh, do you know? that political parties also have professionals. They do. I mean, uh, check. Even if you checked on this table, you'll be in shock. <laughs> that, that this table, the people sitting on, on it are professionals who joined yeah. politics. So we still have people practicing professionalism, mm. and they are in political parties. You Sami, know, can, can I come I, in? I on don't that? get what you mean, horrible. Can I come in on that matter? <laughs> yep. I think we, <laughs> let, let, you see now they are agreeable. <laughs> see, so long as they are political, <laughs> thing is agreeable. Yeah. Sami, I, I want to say this. Mm -hmm. For me, I constantly have, have, have mentioned, and many of our colleagues on this table and any other places, that NATCO was a good thing. Yeah. NATCO was the gate valve that we needed to reduce the temperatures in the country. Mm. Uh, the elections were over. 
Um, on our side, we were saying the elections have not been fair and, and square. On the other side, they said, you guys, whether we win with a minority, we won the elections legitimately. The Supreme Court had uh, pronounced itself. The elections was, was won fair and square. Mm -hmm. And we needed to move on. NADCO was the, the valve that we needed to move on. I have had comments about some of my friends write and tell me, no, we don't need to increase uh, positions at the top there. No, there are certain positions we increase in order to accommodate political um, interest. Uh, interest. Mm -hmm. And some of those include what we have discussed here before. Are we going to have <coughs> leader of opposition, leader of minority. I mean, Sam, you can see like right now, we are in the opposition. We should actually be in a position where we have got a, a shadow government. Mm -hmm. I should be somebody who, if my party allowed me to shadow the member of the, member of the Senate from wherever, and, um, and when he says and he talks and discusses issues, I should be able to respond back to him with the civility and the respect it requires. That's how democracies work. Mm -hmm. But you see, our democracy is still struggling with our little uh, crazy little things and ineptitudes and whatnot. My point is very simple, Sam. NATCO achieved, I think, to a large extent, 50 to 60 percent of what we were ex expecting. For me, that is enough. This 50 percent is, is the, NATCO is trying to sort out the 20 percent that was missing from the previous constitution. But if NADCO deals with 10% and we have 10% left to be dealt another time, I'm comfortable. Yeah. Because work we can't, progress. yes, it's a work in progress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And another thing, we must accept that we who are in the opposition and those who are in government, we are not inherently adversarial. adversarial. We are actually, there are certain things that we must deliberately agree on because we are dealing with a country. We are not dealing with private companies. There are things we must accept that, yes, we need to delineate uh, the boundaries. We now need to have the IBC. For example, Sam, mm -hmm. if a senator like me passes on, you know I can't hold elections because IBC is not <coughs> being constitution. It has been constituted. Yeah, be. I mean, these, these are small things, and yet these are things we can do without disagreeing. Finally, NATCO has given us a roadmap. When you look at the major issues about the challenges of our country, mm -hmm. me, I'm back to square one. Actually, I'm back to factory settings. Unless the president sorts out the issue of corruption. Sam, today I can sit here and narrate for you how governors are setting their relatives to do tenders where they're siphoning off money, they're rewarding their friends who help them during the elections. Leave that. Go to the government departments. The same thing is happening. Leave that. Go to senior government positions. I mean, I can sit here and tell you how some minister, I'm told, has already got three billion. Some have bought houses in Dubai. We are not saying you can't buy houses. We are not saying you can't drive a good car. But can't you first serve the public? Let us serve our public. Right. People, are, uh, people are really, really tired out here. Then we wake up one morning, we announce uh, 96 police officers are corrupt. They have been eating the two, 200 shillings they collect on the side of the road. <laughs> people who are eating 2 billion, they are walking comfortably. <laughs> eh? Some, the other day I met DCI officers. They were looking at me and they said, Mishmo Onyonka, what, is, what has happened to us? You are, you are taking a police officer who has been collecting 100 shillings on the road. Okay, for the whole day he has collected 1,000. 200. Mm -hmm. But we know somebody has stolen 3 billion to go and buy cooking oil, which never came to the country, mm. which was siphoned off. Mm. He has bought things, and we are sitting and people are just saying, ah, now he's okay, yes. He lives, oh, he's even changed there. He goes to Dubai every weekend. In fact, he spends his weekends. He lives on Friday, he comes back on Sunday. I only need to get you the manifest. You'll be shocked what Kenyans are doing. There are people who are going to Monaco. They have bought homes in Monaco, as we sit here. They go for rally driving in Monaco. What business are they doing? They're just having fun. Having He's asking fun where are they getting their money from? With public money. No, Sam, 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 where are they getting the resources from? Sam, Sam, do you want me to keep saying that again over and over again? You see, you've made a claim. Yes. How do we verify that it's true? Sam. Siphoning resources. Sam, can I ask you a question? Isn't there a problem with the purchase of the oil deal? 17 billion? Why is there a problem if the oil was being bought by the government and delivered? Isn't there a problem that we took money and gave it to KNTC to go and buy oil which doesn't exist? Even when the fertilizer story is a success, mm -hmm. isn't there a problem that actually there is an issue where people are challenging our party, is raising an issue whether that fertilizer was donated by the Russian government or whether the fertilizer was given for free? 
or it was supposed to be sold. Is in there a case where right now, the other day you saw there was three billion. I don't know, somebody is supposed to be paid three billion for doing some. I don't have, but if you want next week, I can come with the list. Please do. I will. Um, because we'll need that. And you know, every time I come here and make pronouncement, you dismiss me. Then when I say I this, this, this for... oil story was a cock up, look, it's a cock up. I am I, asking for. I, think you let him bring it. I will bring it. I'm not DCI or ESCC, but those people I'm talking about, if they think I'm lying, see, go and sue me. You know, um, unfortunately, we, we can't work like that. Um, if you make a claim, you have to substantiate. That's all. What I'm I am saying well, is, are you saying that? Sure, who, are you sure, saying that, Sam? Are you I'm saying sure, even if you said those, are you those say, words on the floor of the Senate, you yes, have to substantiate? Absolutely not. I'll just go and announce that Parliament I'm protected, and there's nothing you can do. Mm. I don't have substantiate. Okay, now here Kenya is a free country, <coughs> Sam. I can say it here. But here you're not protected. You have to substantiate. I can say it here. The reason is very simple. The same uh, what I've asked you is simple, Sam. Let me ask you. Yep. Let me give you an example. What happened to the exams? Mm. Tell me. Tell me. What do you think? <laughs> well, obviously, money exchanged hands. People were taking exams and giving some. They're normal Kenyan story. Do I need to go and sit down and give you a proposal on how this was an accident, computer misprint, in fact, you see the way it is, our engineers were not able to get the software, Sam. How do you take an example okay. of 500,000 kids and you bungle it up? I hear you. And that's actually a matter that has been filed in court. This, yeah, this, this, and, this, and, these are my issues. Yeah, these are my issues. More coming from that. You know, Honorable Brody, I'm sorry. Why do I keep mixing up your name? Nabi Nabuera. Um, you said something about professionals, and you said that there are professionals in political parties. And I said I do not do not understand what you're saying. But I have to say here that there's a high court judgment that found the IBC selection panel as it was constituted with four representatives from political, I mean, Parliamentary Service Commission against total seven, saying that it was skewed towards the political class, and a high court decision was made, and in fact, that is what led to the review to what we have today, the current selection panel. And I'm saying, based on that judgment that led Parliament to review that act, more than 50% were coming from the political class. This time round, the proposal is to have Five out of nine coming from the political class. That is the basis of what I was asking. Okay, let, let me. It was not my personal. Oh, oh, okay, let me explain to you. There's something you are missing. Uh, all you need to do is to demonstrate to the court that it is in public good. Yes. Basic. <laughs> this is a progressive constitutional era. In a progressive constitutional era, where the court can be moved to understand that this decision is taken in the public good of the citizens, they'll just hold it. And it's not the first time, uh, Sam, we are doing this. Eh? Uh, 1997, uh, the, the IBC then was negotiated. IPPJ, under an old constitution. Yes, right. you negotiate. Now, a negotiated deal can be registered in court. I hope you know that. That's interesting that you should, you should say that, uh, but like I said... And, you know, and, and, and please, I also need you to understand that the report by NADCO is coming to Parliament. Yeah. Parliament will have to take it through uh, processing, uh, the, the legal processing mm. of, of, of the changes. So Parliament will take into consideration all this and put in a legal framework that's constitutional. Okay, all right. And Thank that you is so why we and support I want to take a look KK. At the, we yeah. say this time KK delivered. We are proud of you guys. Let, let, let's I mean, take a look at the... Ru President, President Ruto, Ruto delivered. Yes. <laughs> ah, no. The others in KK are, uh, are opposed. No, 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 no. This is our government. It's, not, uh, it's, it's a government of Kenya Kwanzaa, it's not an individual. <laughs> Can I just look at the feedback? Okay. Yes, OK. <laughs> at Citizen TV Kenya, Sam Gichuku, the hashtag to use is uh, the break. And Babu Michael is saying that um, Kenya is a very interesting one. This time, the med department uh, got it right, but somebody somewhere neglected um, the warnings. Now, even legislators are saying there were no proper planning. If it's the case, why did the med department give the info? All right. Onyoyo Vin, it is high time that Kenya Kwanzaa government should stop validating the points by blaming Uhuru. It is really unfortunate to see smart politicians focusing on blaming Uhuruto regime in the midst of national calamity, some of us have whole lies in the morning. Ooh, okay. Engineer Lazaro, national governments and councils should stop threatening 
uh, or treating suffering Kenyans to uh, theater of verbal exchange of blame games and act with whatever little in the store. The primary duties of any government around the globe is to protect lives, not blame games. J.M. Osoma, it's sad that the government has resolved to sell out the iconic ASCC building and st state status like Kenya Pipeline, which play distinct roles in our economic transformation. We cannot sell part of our national heritage for the sake of profits. And uh, D.M. D.O. D. Ombori, blaming others often serves as a distraction tactic, veiling the need for self-reflection and proactive solutions. It shifts, it shifts focus away from addressing the core issues and impedes progress by fostering a culture of evasion rather than accountability and resolution. And Sir Nixon, dear government, how ready are you to handle after floods effect like the La Nina, which sometimes follow El Nino events? Let me remind you, there might be a severe shortage of food, clothing, and shelter for your people. Proactivity is key. And Okilo Molimi, you're saying that if Honorable Raila goes ahead and signs a report that doesn't address cost of living, then he would have hanged all his loyal supporters out to dry. It has now become clear that NATCO was a well-orchestrated move by Kenya Kwanzaa to contain Raila and had nothing to do with our sufferings. Those are the views coming from our viewers this morning. Senator um, Richard Onyonka. Yes. Kanyuitia Tunga and uh, Honorable uh, Nabi Nabuera and uh, one Tetas Lotte here for making time for us. Thank you so much for the conversation. It's been heated at some point. Um, we could still, couldn't still agree on some facts, especially on the tokens. We'll investigate that further to understand why Honda Bonabora is being charged so much money for just a few tokens. Um, we take a break. Debra continues after this break. My name is Sam Gituku. See you again some other time. Bye for now.